Starting over. Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about changing a quadratic equation from standard to vertex form. You know, ax squared plus bx plus c into a times x minus h squared plus k. And we're going to do it in a difficult case when a is not equal to 1. So that's our goal. Can we complete the square when a isn't 1? Can we take ax squared plus bx plus c and change that into vertex form like you see right there? So we're going to take something like this. We're going to take something like 2x squared minus 4x plus 7, and we need to get that into vertex form. So we need this, 2x minus 1 squared plus 5. We need to get that from 2x squared minus 4x plus 7. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do, right? Now, before we get into it, really quick, we need to make sure that we understand that this thing right here and this thing over here have to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the order of operations and change this vertex form into standard form to show you that these are two things, these two things here are in fact 100% equal. So x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Boom, boom, done. Distribute the 2. 2 times x squared is 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. 2 plus 5, pretty sure that is the same thing as 7. So you see, these two things are exactly the same. So let's get into the how-to, shall we? We're going to do the same example the first time because you already know what the answer is and you know they're equal. All right, so our very first clue is that when you're dealing with standard and vertex form, the coefficient of x squared, which is a, is the same exact number as this a in vertex form. So those have to be the same. And because of that, it kind of makes us have to approach this in a very specific fashion because you see how this is 2x squared? Well, that means that when we do vertex form, it's going to be 2 and then parentheses x minus something squared or x plus something squared and then plus another number. So what we're going to do first, and when we do this at the very first time, we're going to do every little step separate. And then after that, I'm going to show you how you can combine several steps at the same time to make it go quicker and easier, be less sloppy, a little more organized, right? So anyway, very first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide 2 out of ax squared and out of bx. Even if this number doesn't divide out of this number, we're going to do it anyway, every single time. So that's what we did right here. See, this is still the same value as it was before, because if you distribute the 2, you would get 2x squared, and here you would get minus 4x, and then, of course, plus 7. So then, no problem there, and the reason we do that is we keep a equal to 2. All right, now... Second thing we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite it and we're going to put a plus sign after this b term, our new b term, and we're going to leave a space because we have to take half of b square and add it here. We learned that in the previous video. We want to make this a perfect square. And quadratics are perfect squares. Half of b squared is going to equal to c, right? So let's go ahead and do that now, right? What we're going to do, we're going to take half of b and square it and add it. So half of this number squared... Well, half of negative 2 is negative 1, so negative 1 squared, right? Now this, what we have right here, is no longer equal to what we had before because we've added something. So to keep it equal, you also have to subtract the same exact thing. But the tricky thing is, do you see this is inside the parentheses? And what is this 2 doing to everything inside the parentheses? It's multiplying. So even though I've written a plus 1, I only wrote one of them in here, plus negative 1 squared, there are actually two of them. So what I need to do is I need to subtract a, whatever a is, that many. I have to subtract that many of these things from the back end over here. So now I've added 2 times negative 1 squared, and I've subtracted 2 times negative 1 squared. Do you see? Because if we add and subtract the same exact thing, they're going to cancel each other out, and they're going to make zero. Yeah. All right. Now, see, if you do 2 times negative 1 squared, and you subtract 2 times negative 1 squared, that makes zero. So those cancel each other out, and that makes this step exactly the same value as the original, which is the same as the one before that, which is the same as the very, very original. All right. Now, step five. We're going to factor this. The reason we don't square this if we did square this one, this one would be easy. It'd be x squared minus 2x plus 1. You can factor that. But a lot of the times, these are fractions or they're ugly numbers. And the case turns out that every single time, whatever number's in this parentheses goes right here. Every single time. So don't square it. 
Because your very next step after squaring that, or your very next step is to factor it, in which case you're going to want to unsquare it. So don't square it to begin with. We will eventually want to square this initially, but anyway, one step at a time, we're going to factor this. So still good. X minus 1 squared is X squared minus 2X plus 1. Good. Now, step six, we're going to combine like terms on the outside. So over here, we're going to go ahead and multiply. So this is going to be negative two times one, because negative one squared is one, right? And seven minus two is five. There we go. Done and done. So now let's see that same thing, but a little bit more streamlined in a way that's a little easier to kind of do. I, I wanted to do it this way so you could see what happens on every single step, because what we're going to do next is we're going to combine these steps together. So we're going to do steps one and two all together at one time. We're going to divide two, which is a, out of ax squared and bx. So we're going to divide this number, two, out of this term and out of this term. Do you see? We're going to leave space in the parentheses. Right? So that's step one and two. Now step three and four, we're going to do it at the same exact time. We're going to take half of this number and we're going to square it and we're going to add it. And at the same time, we're going to subtract a many of them. So a being two. So we're going to subtract two of these at the end because we added two in here. Right? Now, we don't square here, but typically we are going to want to square and multiply here. So we're going to want to do that at the same exact time because it's going to save us save us quite a bit of, of work. Now we're going to factor this part and we're going to simplify that part, right? That's steps five and six and we're done. Let's see, let's see one example here. Now, oh, before we go, before we do though, remember the reason we don't square this is that number right here is going to be this number right here every single time. So you don't square it, make yourself, make life easy on yourself, right? Now let's try one more example, shall we? Uh, one that's kind of ugly, but not terribly ugly. So let's say this one right here, 3x squared minus 12x plus 2. And let's see if we can combine these steps together and make sense of this. Your very first step, you're going to divide 3 out of 3x squared and out of 12, and you're going to write it in parentheses, because you would distribute, and you're going to leave space, because here, you're going to make this a perfect square. Okay, so now we're going to take half of b, right? b is a negative 4. We're going to take half of it and square it. Well, half of negative 4 is negative 2 squared, so we're going to take that and place it there, and uh, negative 2 squared is, of course, 4, but we have to subtract 3 of them, because we have 3 of them right here, and so that's going to be 4. So this is really going to be minus 12. Right? So next step, you're going to factor. This number goes right there every single time. And that's it right there. Super easy. And we're going to go ahead and do 2 minus 12, which is negative 10. And boom, you're done. So you could do like the very first example. You could write out every single step, all of them, all the way through. Or you could do it a little bit quicker like we did here. It doesn't look like we wrote more than two steps, but we actually did because at first there's a blank here and we don't have this. And we add this in here and then we add that on the same line without having to rewrite it every single time. And that's how we do it. So now let's see if this really equals this. Let's see if this 3 quantity x minus 2 squared minus 10 is really equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 2. Right? So let's check it. So what we're going to do is we're going to square this, right? And that's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4. In case you don't remember, x minus 2 squared really means x minus 2 times x minus 2. It's not x squared plus 4. It's not x squared minus 4. It's this. Remember? Foil, all that stuff. All right. So now we would distribute, just following the order of operations. And then just combine like terms over here. 12 minus 10 is 2. It's exactly the same thing. Now, there's another way we can check to see if this is right. If we look at this vertex form, 3 quantity x minus 2 squared minus 10, our vertex is 2 and negative 10. Remember, it's the, uh, the x coordinate of the vertex is the opposite sign of this, so 2, negative 10. So what I did is I graphed this equation right here in Desmos and found that the vertex was negative, or 2, negative 10, exactly what it says right here. So... That's another way I know this is right. Let's try one more ugly one. This time it's ugly. The reason why this one's ugly, when you take three out of two, you get a fraction. Yeah, you do. So let's let's take a look at it though, right? Very first step, very, very first step. You're gonna divide three, which is leading coefficient, A. You're gonna divide it out of the first two terms. 
Now, when you divide three out of two, it doesn't, it doesn't divide in. Don't use a decimal, leave it just like a fraction like this. You see, if I were to distribute, I would get three X squared, that's good. And then three times negative two thirds is negative two. So we're still good. All right, now we have to take half of B, which is negative two thirds, and we have to square it. We have to add that number here and we have to subtract three of them over here. And the reason we're subtracting three of them is because of that three, right? So reduce, 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 reduce. If you don't reduce, you're gonna end up with really big, ugly numbers and you're probably gonna mess it up. So just take your time and look for when you can reduce. Half of two thirds is one third. And that even makes sense. Half of two of something is one of something. Half of two thirds is one third. So anyway, uh, negative one third is going to go right here. And if you square it, you get one ninth. And so that's what we're going to have over here. So we have minus one third there and we have three of them. So we have to subtract three of those one ninths. Reduce this to negative one third, right? So factor the left. This number goes there every single time. Reduce and simplify. Seven minus one third is six and two thirds. Boom and done. So let's check to see if these are really equal because, I mean, it's really hard to do this in your head right here to really see if this is equal. So let's go ahead and check it. So this is the original problem. This is what we said it, this equation is in vertex form. So let's check it. Let's square. So x minus one third squared, x minus one third squared. That means x minus one third times x minus one third, right? And then let's go ahead and set it up like the old fashioned way. We're not even doing foil in our head because we want to be careful. Set it up. It means this x times all of that right? And then minus one third right here, minus one third times all of that. So we distribute, you get x squared minus one third x, right? And here you get another minus one third x and then plus one ninth. Negative one third plus negative one third is negative two thirds. So this thing right here is x squared minus two thirds x plus one ninth. We have to multiply it by three. So I'm just going to write it like that. So I'm going to distribute the three now, right? Three times negative two thirds, is two and three times one ninth is one third, right? So three times two thirds, those, this is really three over one like this, you see, and three divided by three is one. So you're left with two. So this is going to be a negative two X right there. And then the three times the one ninth, well, that just reduces to one third. So this is what we got. Three X squared minus two X plus one third, and then plus six and two thirds. Add these two together. That makes seven. Boom, done. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? So not too bad. Now, if you want some notes and some more help on this, you want to see some other videos that review some practice problems, you can go to my website. I'll put a link in the description, thebeardedmathman.com. This is Vertex Part 2. This is where you're going to find this video hosted. But there's a whole slew of information and other things on quadratics and all kinds of other things as well. And you've got a series of notes, you got videos, you got practice problems. It's all there. Hey, the only thing I ask is if this video has been helpful, you like it, you give a thumbs up, you share it on social media. Anyway, I hope it's been helpful. If you have questions, comments, like concern, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below. Anyway, hope it's been helpful. Be patient with yourself. This is a tricky thing to learn how to do. That was a quick video. Uh, for something that's got this much arithmetic in it. So be patient with yourself and you'll get it. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.